Horror. A terrible virus can be found everywhere. Manicures and tattoos can kill the liver. Today, we will talk about the liver and the dangers of such a formidable disease as hepatitis. Many of us begin to have our health on our minds only when there is a wake-up call from our bodies. This also applies to the liver, which bears special responsibility for numerous and very important processes occurring in it. Our liver courageously takes the fall of toxins, allergens, and other hazardous substances, turning them into safer ones and more ready to be removed from the body. It does the same with an excess of hormones, vitamins, and other elements useful to us in normal dosages. On the other hand, the liver accumulates reserves of useful substances, vitamins, and microelements for the regulation of carbohydrate metabolism, and a large amount of blood in case of emergency compensation for blood loss. The liver also synthesizes hormones and enzymes, blood plasma proteins, cholesterol and lipids, bile, including the specific pigment bilirubin, without which our body simply could not exist. Humans' attitude toward the liver has always been respectful. At all times, the liver was perceived as an organ of special importance. Over the past 2,000 years, opinions on liver structure and function have changed and developed. It has been well studied from an anatomical point of view since ancient times. In antiquity, religious beliefs coexisted with the data of anatomical and physiological studies. As far back as ancient times, people made up a system of knowledge about the liver. The features of the development of liver diseases were carefully studied and described back in those ancient times so that the conclusions of modern medicine often find endorsement in ancient sources. The most important role was attributed to this organ. The liver was considered the receptacle of life. It was identified with life. Religious and mystical properties were attributed to the liver. The Babylonians, studying the liver systematically, made clay models of it, on which they depicted ritual symbols and mantras like, Let your liver be smooth. The practice of studying the liver spread from Mesopotamia to Greece, where it was most deeply developed. The ancient Greeks depicted the rite of examining the liver on amphoras. The Etruscans smelted it from bronze or sculpted it from clay and later used it as a teaching aid. For example, a bronze model of a liver dating back to the 3rd century BC was found. The myths of ancient Greece reflected the medical viewpoint on the liver, reflecting its high resilience. So, in the myth of Prometheus, the gods punished the hero for giving fire to people and chained him high in the mountains, and a merciless eagle pecked out his liver every day. But the liver was restored during each subsequent night. The same fate befell Titus from the famous Odyssey of Homer, whose liver was eaten by two vultures in the underworld. During the 5th and 6th centuries BC, science began to displace myths in the study of the liver. So, Diogenes described the large vessels of the liver and introduced the concept of hepatitis, which means liver inflammation. Ancient scientists considered the liver as the main organ of blood circulation and digestion. Even back then, it was known that it was in the liver that bile was formed. Jaundice caused serious concern in ancient people and evoked fear and hatred. In the 5th century BC, Hippocrates described the association of jaundice with liver disease. He was the first to comment on such a disease as liver cirrhosis. This is the process of formation of connective tissue in the liver, which leads to dysfunction of the organ. In his opinion, a combination of jaundice with a hard liver was a bad sign. Hippocrates recorded the first case of jaundice. It happened on the Greek island of Thasos. Hippocrates described the symptoms as follows, high fever and nausea. After a short time, yellowing of the skin was observed, that is, jaundice developed. The temperature rose. But the worst thing was if the temperature did not rise, because in this case, the patients died. Today, we can argue that it was most likely viral hepatitis. Incidentally, an interesting fact, the works named Corpus Hippocratum were created not only by Hippocrates, 
Many doctors who lived at different times took part in this work compilation. One of the central doctrines of this manuscript is the theory of four fluids, the essence of which is that human health is determined by the harmonious ratio of four fluids, blood, sanguis, yellow bile, color, mucus, phlegm, and black bile, melancholy, and qualitative changes in at least one of these fluids lead to illness. Treatment aims to restore balance to life, dietetics, hence the word diet. The prevalence of any of the fluids determine the characteristics of a person's character. Everyone has probably heard an irritable person being called bilious. That's not far from wrong, since the patient manifests intoxication and nervousness with inflammation of the liver and bile entering the bloodstream. It was from those times that such terms as choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic, and melancholic, which are widely used not only in fiction and popular literature, but also in modern medical publications designed for specialists, has survived to this day. The Merit of Aristotle is a detailed study and description of the bile ducts. It was Aristotle who correctly identified the role of the liver in the process of digesting food, as well as cleaning the blood of harmful substances. At the beginning of our era, the famous physician of antiquity, Galen, following the teachings of Plato, considered the liver to be an area in which a part of the soul lives. Avicenna wrote about the need to differentiate different types of jaundice in the first century A.D. Galen systematized and supplemented a huge amount of medical knowledge collected since the 5th century B.C., creating a medical system that has stood the test of time for 1,500 years. Galen was the first to correctly understand and describe the basic functions of the liver. He identified and described four types of jaundice, which almost completely corresponds to modern views on this issue. The Renaissance opened Leonardo da Vinci to medicine, the greatest scientist who lived in the 15th century, and described various liver diseases based on the study of anatomy on corpses. Later, the Italian physician Andreas Vesalius first pointed out the relationship of cirrhosis of the liver with excessive drinking. In the 19th century, René Lenec officially coined the term cirrhosis. He believed that the cirrhosis of the liver is the growth of tissue that causes a decrease in the size of a healthy liver. At the end of the 19th century, the Russian scientist Botkin hypothesized that jaundice is a result of inflammation of the liver, and it can be of an infectious nature and take on chronicity. The disease, known as viral hepatitis, was named Botkin's disease, and was later collectively referred to as viral hepatitis A. It should be noted that hepatitis is a disease, and jaundice is a symptom. Jaundice can occur with any hepatitis. Yellowing of the sclera of the eyes and skin is the most striking symptom of liver disruption. Hepatitis used to be called jaundice when physicians did not yet know about the viral nature of the disease and did not know how to distinguish between types of hepatitis. The discovery and study of various hepatitis viruses made it possible to replace the concept of hepatitis, which was widely used 20 years ago, with specific forms, and made it possible to develop highly effective treatment regimens. Also, the success of transplantology has given real hope to patients when no effective conservative methods could be expected. Dr. Thomas Starzl was the first in the world to transplant a human liver in 1963. Today, hepatology is one of the rapidly and actively developing sciences. The general concept of hepatitis combines viral hepatitis and those of non-viral origin, developing due to poisoning, alcohol abuse, or taking certain medications. We will discuss the most common types of viral hepatitis. In total, there are several strains of hepatitis virus. All of these viruses are transmitted in different ways, sometimes similar, sometimes completely different, but they all have a significant impact on the liver and overall health. The virus of some types of hepatitis can cause disease, the symptoms of which include yellowing of the skin, so-called jaundice, feeling of constant fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain, as in the case of hepatitis A. But there are types of hepatitis that can also cause a serious chronic infection, 
You probably noticed that there are hepatitis viruses with different letters. What do they mean? There are only five letters in the designation of the viruses that cause hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. We will consider the most common hepatitis viruses A, B, and C. It is easier to sort through them than you think. Hepatitis A is a disease of dirty hands. The virus is transmitted through water and food and is more common in regions with poor sanitary and hygienic conditions. Hepatitis A almost always occurs in an acute form, which means that they end in recovery in a fairly short time. As far as the number of registered cases is concerned, this disease ranks third after acute respiratory viral infections and acute intestinal infections. Viral hepatitis A is an acute viral disease that affects the liver, is characterized by jaundice and intoxication. It's a fairly common disease since the way its viruses enter the body is the same as gastrointestinal infections. Hepatitis A does not cause chronic liver disease, but can be accompanied by severe symptoms and sometimes lead to acute liver failure, often resulting in death. Susceptibility to this hepatitis is universal but children, adolescents, and young people under 30 are more likely to suffer from it. Clinical symptoms of the disease are also observed more often in adults than in children. The prevalence of its severe forms and mortality are higher among older people. In children under 6 years of age, the infection usually has mild symptoms, with jaundice developing in only 10% of cases. Hepatitis A occurs both in the form of isolated cases and in the form of epidemics. The incidence is seasonal, especially in summer and autumn. Epidemics can also be protracted and affect entire communities for several months as a result of person-to-person -person transmission. The disease occurs on all continents and in all countries of the world. Viral hepatitis A has become most widespread in countries with warm climates and poor sanitary conditions. Many cases of infection with the hepatitis virus occur on vacation in hot southern countries, for example in Egypt, Tunisia, Turkey, and India. The virus is stable in the environment, persists in water, in food, on various objects for a long time, and dies at a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. By being excreted from the patient's body in the feces, infecting the water and soil, the viruses get on human hands and then on household items and food. Commonly, infection occurs when using bad drinking water infected with the hepatitis A virus. Water in rivers, lakes, and seas, polluted by sewage and used for bathing, also constitutes a danger. Transmission of the virus is also possible through food that has not been heated before consumption. Seafood dishes that are not cooked correctly are also dangerous. Infection through dirty hands most often occurs in public places, as a result of contact with contaminated doorknobs, railings, contaminated household items. When penetrating into the body, the virus infects the liver cells. Inflammation and necrosis develop, manifested by the poisoning syndrome and enlargement of the liver, and sometimes the spleen. Incubation, that is, a latent period of 7 to 50 days. The disease begins with a period of 1 to 2 weeks, when a patient experiences an aversion to food, or a decrease in appetite, nausea, vomiting, skin itching. Joints may ache. The patients may have a runny nose and cough. Most often, the onset of the disease is accompanied by a rise in temperature and may resemble the flu. The urine becomes dark, the color of strong tea, and the feces become discolored, resembling the color of white or gray clay. This is followed by a period of jaundice for two to four weeks. The whites of the eyes turn yellow, then the skin. As a result, the appearance of jaundice is accompanied by a decrease in body temperature to a normal level, and the headache also becomes weaker. A blood test reveals an increase in bilirubin content, a bile pigment, one of the main components of bile in the body. Jaundice is not always the case. A suppressed form is also possible. Such patients are especially dangerous for others, because they are a hidden source of infection. There is no specific treatment for hepatitis A. Recovery can be slow and take weeks or months. 
it is necessary to isolate the patient and introduce quarantine measures in the team. The patient must follow a strict diet. Do not eat fatty, fried, and smoked foods. Alcohol is strictly prohibited. It is important to keep from unjustified prescribing of medications. If there is no acute liver failure, hospitalization of patients is not required. Treatment is aimed at maintaining comfort and a balanced diet, including replenishing fluid losses caused by vomiting and diarrhea. Hepatitis A does not have a chronic stage of development and does not cause permanent damage to the liver. After infection, the immune system produces antibodies against the hepatitis A virus, which provide further immunity, that is, the patient receives natural protection against the disease. For the prevention of viral hepatitis A, you should strictly observe the rules of personal hygiene and cooking technologies. Use only boiled or bottled water for drinking. Wash vegetables, berries, and fruits thoroughly with running water. You better not buy food in spontaneous markets and in dubious places with poor sanitation. You'd also better not buy cut watermelons and melons and always heat treat seafood. Vaccines are available to prevent hepatitis A. The hepatitis A virus vaccine was first introduced in 1992. In countries where vaccination was widely practiced, the incidence of hepatitis A has declined sharply. In the United States, the incidence of hepatitis A has decreased by 90% since 1990. Vaccination of children is recommended at 1 and 2 years of age and is not recommended for children under 12 months of age. Vaccination is also recommended for people who may be exposed to the virus while traveling. There is also viral hepatitis B. Dr. Baruch Blumberg discovered the hepatitis B virus and invented a vaccine against it. For this discovery, he received the Nobel Prize in 1976. The virus is extremely resistant to low and high temperatures, including boiling, repeated freezing and thawing, and prolonged exposure to an acidic environment. In the external environment at room temperature, the hepatitis B virus can persist for up to several weeks in blood stains, on a razor blade, or on the needle point. This is an infectious disease of an acute or chronic nature in which the liver is affected by a certain virus. The condition is considered very dangerous as it can lead to the development of cirrhosis and other severe complications, being a direct threat to the health and life of the patient. The main reason for the spread of the disease, in contrast to hepatitis A, is the transmission of the hepatitis B virus from person to person through the blood. There are several possible infection options. During fetal development, hepatitis B from a pregnant woman is transmitted to the baby. Besides, an infection can occur during blood transfusion from an infected patient. During various medical and diagnostic procedures if non-sterile instruments are used. During unprotected sexual contact. During intravenous injection of drugs to several people with one syringe. In some cases, infection occurs through non-sexual contact, when body fluids, such as blood or semen, fall on injured areas of another person's skin. Fortunately, this type of virus transmission is extremely rare. The incubation period for hepatitis B is 42 to 180 days. Symptoms, such as hyposthenia or a slight increase in body temperature, the patient can easily attribute to the banal ARVI. The development occurs gradually, and the first symptoms of hepatitis B at the incipient stage are pain in the joints, rashes in various parts of the body, increased nervousness, irritability, decreased appetite, increased fatigue. Some patients experience mild indigestion, waves of nausea. Dark urine and discolored stool are also noted. The next stage of the disease is a period of jaundice, the main symptom of which is the discoloration of the skin and the whites of the eyes. This stage usually lasts about one month. Against the background of yellowing of the skin and mucous membranes, the general symptoms of poisoning increase. The patient feels worse and gets tired faster. Heaviness and acute pain in the right side, a taste of bitterness in the mouth, severe skin itching, swelling of the face, neck, limbs, weight loss, nausea, especially after meals and in the morning, a decrease in heart rate, 
and a decrease in blood pressure are also noted. In most cases, chronic hepatitis B occurs with little or no symptoms. This is the main danger of pathology, because the absence of symptoms does not reduce the destructive impact of the disease on the liver. If the disease is detected at the stage of cirrhosis, that is, severe scarring or liver cancer, the patient may already be incurable. In this primary diagnosis, based on examination and questioning of the patient, it is impossible to distinguish hepatitis B from other types of hepatitis. Therefore, laboratory confirmation of the diagnosis is extremely important. There are several types of blood tests to diagnose people with hepatitis B. These tests can also be used to distinguish between acute and chronic infections. Hepatitis B is incurable. Complete removal of the hepatitis B virus from the body is impossible because the DNA of the virus is integrated into the human genome. Treatment is necessary if the virus is active and there are changes in the liver that can lead to cirrhosis. Early antiviral treatment may be required in people whose infection takes a very aggressive course or who are immunocompromised. Existing medicines can stop the virus from replicating, thus minimizing liver damage, and more often, treatment is in the form of years of maintenance therapy. People with hepatitis B can live long and healthy lives. Prevention of infection with hepatitis B is, first of all, safe sex, minimizing the number of partners and the use of condoms. It is also important to recall that intravenous drug use often leads to infection with hepatitis. At the national level, the World Health Organization recommends work with injecting drug users, disposable needle and syringe programs, and condom distribution programs for people who inject drugs. To prevent infection with hepatitis B in the family or in public places, you should follow the usual precautions. Avoid sharing personal hygiene products and be wary of other people's blood. Any skin lesions should be covered with a plaster or bandage. Children should also be taught these rules. Vaccination against hepatitis B is a universal method of protection for all routes of infection. Hepatitis B vaccines have been widely recommended for infants in the United States since 1991. Parents do not usually want to vaccinate their child immediately after birth so as not to burden the immune system. However, thus the child is at greater risk because children under the age of one are most at risk of infection. Besides, in most cases at this age, hepatitis becomes chronic. The risk decreases with age. In 30 to 50 percent of infected children from 1 to 6 years old, the disease becomes chronic. Chronic hepatitis B cannot be cured, but it can be prevented by vaccination. Immunization against hepatitis B is effective in 96 percent of cases. When fully vaccinated, Vaccinations provide protection for up to 20 years and sometimes for life. Vaccination is especially recommended for most at-risk population categories, including healthcare workers, people with chronic kidney disease, and men who have sex with men. The first hepatitis B vaccine was made from the virus carrier's blood plasma. It was difficult to manufacture and expensive. They began to use it in the early 80s in the USA and China. In 1987, scientists invented a genetically modified hepatitis B vaccine. This vaccine was produced synthetically and did not contain blood products. That is, the possibility of infection from the vaccine was completely excluded. Besides, this production method is cheaper and faster, so the vaccine has become more affordable. In 2013, hepatitis B immunization was introduced in 183 countries. There is also the hepatitis C virus. It was discovered in 1989 by cloning a DNA copy of the virus that caused what is then called non-A, non-B hepatitis in infected chimpanzees. Three scientists from the U.S. and the U.K. were engaged in the isolation and study of the hepatitis C virus in the 1980s. Harvey Alter, Charles Rice from the U.S., and Michael Houghton from the U.K., received the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their discovery and the study of the hepatitis C virus. 
When infected, the hepatitis C virus, just like with other types of hepatitis, infects healthy liver cells. A viral attack activates the immune system, causing inflammation. When hepatitis C becomes chronic, the attack of cells on the immune system intensifies. Over time, inflammation damages the liver, killing liver cells and leaving scars of connective tissue, that is, the formation of hepatic fibrosis. Hepatitis C causes liver inflammation that may not show up for years. In the human body, the virus multiplies rapidly, which at the chronic stage can cause the development of cancer lesions, cirrhosis and hepatic cancer. Chronic viral hepatitis C is called a sweet killer. It is considered the most dangerous type of hepatitis, both because of the development of pathological processes in the body and because of the peculiarities of the disease progression. As a rule, there is no expression of hepatitis C symptoms. Infection of the body proceeds in a latent, indolent form. Clinical manifestations of this disease are not visible. Often, a person can attribute the symptoms of hepatitis C to common overwork, feeling a decrease in efficiency, constant weakness and fatigue. A person may not suspect that a deadly virus is multiplying in his or her body. Remember, a person can be infected with hepatitis C without being aware of that. Only a doctor who is an expert in viral hepatitis can diagnose this disease. Manifestations of chronic viral hepatitis C depend on the duration of the disease and the degree of inflammation of the liver tissue. Pathological changes in the liver are not always diagnosed using traditional ultrasound of the liver. Only a comprehensive and multidisciplinary examination of the entire gastrointestinal tract will tell the doctor that the patient has begun to suffer liver changes. If chronic hepatitis C infection is diagnosed, the patient should be examined to determine the degree of liver damage, such as fibrosis and cirrhosis of the liver. This can be done with a liver biopsy. It is also important to conduct non-invasive tests at the stage of prenatal development, giving a chance to identify significant abnormalities in the unborn child. Just a sample of the mother's blood is necessary for the test. Based on the data on the degree of liver damage, a decision is made regarding the methods of treatment and case management. Early diagnosis helps to prevent infection-related complications and further transmission of the virus. Testing is recommended for individuals in high-risk groups. Unfortunately, nobody's insured against contracting hepatitis C. This does not always require personal contact with an infected patient. The disease usually spreads when the blood of an infected person enters the body of an uninfected person. People who often receive blood transfusions, as well as those who have been on hemodialysis for a long time, are at risk. Newborn children are susceptible to infection if their mother is sick with hepatitis C. Besides, there are rare but still possible situations of contagion. For example, the use of personal hygiene items that could come into contact with the blood of a sick person. Sexual contact with a person infected with the hepatitis C virus, tattoos or piercings made in inappropriate sanitary conditions. It is important to know that the hepatitis C virus is not transmitted by sharing cutlery, breastfeeding, hugging, kissing, holding hands, coughing or sneezing, or insect bites. It also does not spread through food or water. Now the problems of prevention of this disease are given careful attention all over the world. July 28th is World Hepatitis Day every year. According to the World Health Organization for 2022, chronic hepatitis C affects approximately 58 million people worldwide, with about 1.5 million new infections each year. An estimated 3.2 million children and adolescents are affected by chronic hepatitis C. Besides, According to the World Health Organization, approximately 290,000 people died from hepatitis C in 2019, mainly as a result of cirrhosis and carcinoma of the liver, that is, primary liver cancer. To date, there is not a single country left that the hepatitis C virus has not reached. It still spreads rapidly in both developed and low-income countries. The highest incidence rates are in the eastern Mediterranean region and the European region each of which has 12 million people with chronic infection. 
About 10 million people are chronically infected in the Southeast Asia and Western Pacific regions, 9 million in the African region, and 5 million in the Americas region. At present, chronic viral hepatitis C is officially recognized as a curable disease. A primary infection does not always require treatment, as in some patients, the immune system successfully copes with the virus itself. However, treatment is prescribed for those patients in whom hepatitis C becomes chronic. The goal of therapy for hepatitis C is complete cure. Therapy involves antivirals and, with proper and timely treatment, gives a complete recovery. Antiviral medication is based on the degree of liver damage, an analysis of the likelihood of therapy success and potential risks of adverse events, and also depends on the presence of comorbidities. Among the medications for the treatment of hepatitis C, there are those that act only on certain genotypes of the hepatitis C virus, and there are pangenotypic regimens that is effective for all genotypes of the virus. For a long time, the only treatment for hepatitis C was regimens containing interferon. Due to poor tolerability, side effects, and a long course of treatment, it was prescribed only with significant progression of the disease. Modern interferon-free therapy, which consists of medicines without interferon, combines high efficacy and safety with a relatively short course of therapy. The first interferon-free medicines affected individual virus genotypes. Despite their high efficiency and safety, they did not solve all the problems. Therefore, studies continued and ended after the development of universal pangenotypic schemes that are suitable for most patients including the so-called difficult ones. Their use has become the world standard as it allows for minimizing the treatment duration, the burden on the healthcare system, on the physician, and, most importantly, on the patient. The World Health Organization recommends the use of pangenotypic regimens for the treatment of viral hepatitis. They help to avoid an additional stage of diagnosis, reduce treatment time, increase efficiency, and save a sufficient amount of money at the national level. WHO recommends this therapy for all adults, adolescents, and children under three years of age with chronic hepatitis C infection. This regimen cures the majority of those infected, while the course of treatment is short, usually 12 to 24 weeks, and its duration depends on the absence or presence of cirrhosis of the liver. In the United States, it is also recommended to use pangenotypic regimens in patients with chronic hepatitis C without fibrosis with a 95 to 100 percent success rate. Global access to hepatitis C treatment gets better, but is still quite limited. In 2019, of the 58 million people living with hepatitis C worldwide, approximately 20 percent knew their diagnosis. At the same time, of these, by the end of 2019, about 62% had completed the course of treatment, which is 9.4 million people living with a chronic infection. In many high-income countries, the cost of treatment with pangenotypic medicines remains high. However, in many countries, mainly low-income ones, prices have fallen sharply due to the introduction of generic drugs. Generics are medicines that contain an active ingredient identical to the one patented by the drug designer. At their core, generics have the same quantity and quality of the active substance as in the original product. However, generic drugs are much cheaper than the original, which makes them more affordable and allows them to be successfully used to treat serious diseases in low-income countries. Currently, there is no effective vaccine against hepatitis C, so infection prevention consists in reducing the risk of infection in medical institutions, as well as in highly vulnerable groups. These include injecting drug users and men who have sex with men, especially those infected with HIV. At first glance, it seems that hepatitis A, B, and C are the same or very similar, but they are not. Different viral hepatitis is completely different diseases. Each of them is caused by its own pathogen. Transmission routes, methods of treatment, and prevention may differ. They have only one thing in common. In all cases, the target is the liver. For example, hepatitis A rarely becomes chronic, is easily tolerated by children, and is transmitted orally, that is, through the mouth. 
Hepatitis B and C viruses are transmitted through the blood. In 10% of adults, hepatitis B goes into a chronic stage, which is incurable by this time. Modern preparations can only reduce the activity of inflammation and damage to the liver. Hepatitis C is often called the sweet killer due to the fact that in many cases the disease does not manifest itself at all. In 20% of cases, the body's own immune system copes with the disease, but in the remaining 80%, it also becomes chronic and lasts for decades, eventually progressing into cirrhosis or liver cancer. However, hepatitis C can be cured, unlike hepatitis B. Hepatitis B and C are often compared with such a terrible viral disease as HIV. It can be noted that hepatitis C is about 10 times and hepatitis B is 100 times more contagious than HIV. Besides, unlike HIV, hepatitis viruses can live outside the human body in the open air for up to several weeks and remain active. This means that, unlike HIV, hepatitis can be contracted in a contact household way. The probability of getting HIV in this way is almost zero, while at the global level, mortality from viral hepatitis is comparable to that from tuberculosis and HIV. Often in society, it is believed that the hepatitis C virus only affects drug addicts, and as a result, this disease is considered shameful. There is a so-called stigmatization of the disease, and that's why people suffering from hepatitis are afraid of condemnation from people around them. However, anyone can become infected with hepatitis C, in a hospital, during medical procedures, in a cosmetic or nail salon, or at a tattoo master. A child can get the virus from the mother in the prenatal period, and drug addicts also need not only proper treatment, but also the support of society. Fortunately, today, in all developed countries, there are funds and societies to support patients with hepatitis, helping them to endure difficult situations and cope with this dangerous disease. Here is a story of a specific person who contracted the hepatitis C virus and overcame it. Eve was just over 20 years old when she found out about her illness. It seemed to her that everything was lost. Sweet killer hepatitis C, death of a husband, loss of a job. But now Eve is completely healthy. She's the head of a charitable foundation and an activist in helping patients with hepatitis, helping others to carry on along this difficult path. She is also expecting her third child. Fortunately, her older sons are healthy, although she gave birth to them while being ill. Perhaps they were saved by the fact that the disease at that time was not yet in the active phase, or maybe they were just lucky. Drugs are the cause of all her troubles. Eve grew up in an orderly family, got married early for great love, and thought that she had a run of luck. But her first husband was a drug addict. So Eve got the hepatitis C virus. Well-being created an illusion that there was still time. If there is no other way, she could drink some medicine to support the liver. It wasn't until nearly ten years later that the woman began treatment, when she divorced her first husband and met another man. When Eve nevertheless decided on treatment, the eldest child was ten years old, and the youngest was a year old at that time. The first six months of treatment seemed like hell to her. After each injection, she got a fever which lasted for four days. The woman scarcely slept. She lost weight from 56 to 38 kilos. Her hair fell out. Her skin completely dried up. She thought that it couldn't get any worse, but it turned out that it could. After six months of treatment, her husband died. She had a choice— whether to quit treatment or move on. At that time, Eve participated in the project, under the terms of which she was supposed to motivate people to be treated by personal example. She told how important it was to tune into treatment not only for themselves, but that they should also prepare their loved ones for this difficult period. Eve's doctor, to whom she is immensely grateful, was her greatest supporter. Since then, Eve has been helping others for nine years already. The woman heads a charitable foundation that helps adults and children with chronic diseases, HIV, hepatitis, tuberculosis, as well as those suffering from drug addiction and alcoholism. According to Eve, a sick person often knows that treatment was the right decision, but cannot make it. And sometimes a living example is enough. 
when someone who has already gone through all this tells them, you can deal with it. Such decisions are even harder for parents of sick children. Eve communicates with them, sees the experiences of their mothers. This is a very difficult situation when not only the consultation of a specialist in communicable diseases, but also the support of an equal consultant who has gone through all this him or herself, and the help of a professional psychologist is necessary. This is evidenced by the whole experience of Eve's illness, treatment, and work. Summing up all of the above, we can say that all types of viral hepatitis is a really serious and dangerous disease. In most cases, protection against infection is in our hands. We just have to follow hygiene rules, use condoms during sex, do not use any drugs, especially injecting ones, and undergo medical examinations and tests on time. And be sure to get vaccinated. Sincerely yours, Dr. PopMed.